There aren't many motorsport disciplines that get me quite as excited as rallycross. Ultra high intensity, massive jumps and packed with as much strategy as is humanly possible for a five minute race. It is the perfect motorsport for a world where people are struggling more and more to find time to sit down and enjoy a two hour Grand Prix. Nothing quite compares to rallycross and I've been an avid follower over the past decade or so and this is one of many reasons why I was so excited to hear that Automobilista 2 was getting Rallycross in their latest update. Much to my enjoyment, the team at Ryzer Studios didn't beat around the bush with this update for a second. Seven circuits and six cars across three new classes were added in this update, all flushed out in great detail. My favourites include Hockenheim, Nürburgring, Spa and Barcelona as all of these feature or have featured on the World Rallycross Championship schedule. Along with this, the Foz Motorsport Complex was added in this update and this was the venue that held the 2013 X Games event in partnership with Global Rallycross. Finally, the Tiki venue is a new fictional circuit for Automobilista and whilst it is not an actual circuit, it has clearly been heavily inspired by the Finnish Rallycross circuit Quovala. The track has been changed just enough to avoid licensing concerns but at least it's doing better than the Escura Raceway Park which is littered with surroundings without collision resulting in a simple understeer moment quickly becoming a galactic flight through the Shadow Realm. But let's ignore that for now and dig into the most crucial part of the video. What is it like to drive Rallycross in Automobilista 2? Well, I have to say, coming from an iRacing background which I'll be using as my closest reference, I am very impressed. The car has a phenomenal sense of weight transfer and sliding inertia across the dirt, with the overall feeling and response from the wheels force feedback also exceeding my expectations. I've got to be honest and say I haven't driven much of Automobilista 2 until this update, but the general feel is exquisite and I now rank the title very highly as a simulator. The car movement feels much closer to iRacing overall rather than Dirt Rally 2 or even the WRC franchise, which made the transition very easy after adjusting for the more considerable front grip. In fact, overall, the front of the car has a big part in Rallycross and Automobilista 2. The Rallycross supercars have their torque split ratio much more geared towards delivering power to the front wheels rather than the rear, which creates an almost front wheel drive sensation in many situations. This is very apparent when you find yourself in a significant slide, with the best solution often being to plant your right foot hard on the accelerator and let the car figure the rest out. The torque split cannot be adjusted in the garage at all, so this is simply something you'll naturally learn to drive around, but this can throw off experienced rallycross drivers initially, with most of my experience being much more centered around prioritizing the rear wheel power delivery on an all wheel drive rallycross car. One thing that can be changed though is the car's coast ramp angle, which I highly recommend you play around with quite early in your setup development. The baseline setups feature a large amount of initial turn in oversteer under braking that'll have you crying about lost lap time in every heavy braking zone. This makes trail braking very hard, which is not ideal with how vital trail braking is to ultimate lap speed in these cars with their relatively poor cornering performance on tarmac. The coast ramp angle adjusts the amount of locking faced by the differential under deceleration, so that will be your most straightforward solution to the problem here. Once that is sorted, the driving experience on Automobilista 2 with Rallycross is very positive and gets a big thumbs up from me. The only real negatives I was able to pin to the sim regarding the driving experience were that despite the force feedback's high level of detail with all the little divots and compressions in the road and dirt all modelled to a high degree, I did find it hard to adjust the damping of the wheel sufficiently enough to make the jump landings a little more comfortable as these landings are particularly violent and catch you off guard at first. For those of you with a physical handbrake on the simulator as well, the response on this seems to be lacking just a bit with the game gradually increasing the brake pressure at a fixed rate when you pull on it. This often means you don't quite get the response and rotation from the handbrake that you would like. On the physics side of things, it's not all sunshine lollipops and rainbows either. These cars are of course very advanced in their suspension geometry and damper compression and rebounds, but the ability to destroy anti-car curbs in these RX cars is absolutely bonkers and would have the real car in pieces within a lap. On the sim though, the vehicle will get jolted temporarily, but with minimal effect on the overall balance at all. 
In fact, on day one, I was able to get a world record lap at the time at Nürburgring, which has now been bumped down to P2, but this lap was a perfect example of how much curb abuse you can get away with. My lap also highlighted the second flaw I found with the Automobilista 2 Rallycross physics. In the supercars, for whatever reason, whether it is tyre temperature or pressure related or even just tyre wear, the tyres seem to be at their absolute peak immediately out of the pits with low tyre pressures and no temperature in them. This seems very backwards, with the car only getting slower as tyre temperature increases over a run. This is something that doesn't seem to necessarily affect the other two cars introduced in this update as both the Formula Dirt and the Kart Cross vehicles are noticeably slower initially on cold tyres, with myself finding that I'm unable to keep up with the AI in the opening two laps of the race in these vehicles. Once the temperature and tyre pressures get into the operating windows, you can comfortably hunt the AI down, but it does feel like you're giving the AI a two lap head start at times. Speaking of AI though, they are another topic that needs to be discussed because they are not perfect. I found the AI on 120 difficulty to be exceptionally slow at times, to the point where I could start last, give the AI a head start, and take the joker lap on the opening lap, and still lead by over a second into turn 6. Now, of course, almost every game struggles with the AI on the opening lap of the race, so even if we ignore that, the problem still remains. My fastest laps against the AI were 8 tenths of a second quicker at Barcelona, 1.1 seconds at Nürburgring, 1.3 seconds at Spa-Francorchamps, and a simply unheard of 2.9 seconds faster at the Foz Motorsport Complex. I'd very much like to see this improved as right now outside of multiplayer, I find this limits the Rallycross content to an almost entirely solo activity with such little competition from the AI. Speaking of the cars though, my testing found that the four vehicles in the Rallycross class were all able to achieve very similar lap times, which is great to see that balanced performance is not an issue here. However, rear tyre wear was a little concern in the Mitsubishi, but with most Rallycross races lasting just 5 minutes, this shouldn't be too much of a deterrent to those keen on trying the Japanese legend on the sim. All the cars are beautifully modelled in classic Automobilista style, and the circuits are fantastically modelled too, with great detail added from moving tyre bundles at the apexes of the corners, updated grandstands in new locations better suited to the rallycross courses, and fully developed paddock and event branding surroundings for the new circuits, even on tracks that were already on the sim as tarmac Grand Prix circuits. The kart cross vehicle is sure to be a favourite of many with its brilliant sounding motorcycle engine pairing a very light chassis that moves around a tonne. The wheel work required to keep this car underneath you on a hot lap is enough to make you dizzy. It's all part of the fun though, and whilst I am a Rallycross supercar fanboy, I can't help but giggle when driving this phenomenal car. Regardless of what you end up racing with this new update, I can't see how you wouldn't get a good couple of hours of fun out of it. The update is one of the most expensive in recent history on Automobilista 2, so it is worth factoring in just how much you would be using this content before hitting buy, but from myself, I'd absolutely give this a recommendation as the few flaws and negatives I've highlighted in this video, I'm sure will get fixed in a coming update. To those who have already bought this new update, by all means, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section and I'll do my best to get back to replying to every single one of you. Thank you so much for watching my first video in a long time on a different simulator, and if you did enjoy it, be sure to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all in the following video.